Major League Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Detroit Tigers and the Chicago Cubs. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. First pitch moments away and towing the slab in this one Javier Assad and singing he likes pitching at home. Well truly for him there is no place like home he's been so dominant here and as a teammate you expect him when pitching at home this year to go out and dominate just as he has the fans expect it and I think everyone around here knows that he's a good pitcher even though we don't see the same splits on the road we're going to start to see that translate as well. Here comes a pitch. Down the left field line. Looks like extra bases. Makes the turn and heads for second. And he's got a leadoff double. Everything came together for him. Just a cookie down the middle. I mean, those are the ones you dream about. The ones in the cage, you're just hoping you get in the ball game. Right down the middle, not a whole lot of velocity. Right on top of it. On the north side of Chicago, John Chomby and Chris Singleton. Here's Riley Green. And a foul ball. Meadows at second with nobody out. Oh and two now and that one missing low backed off the plate that time the two two just misses with that one. Well, as a pitcher, when you make a big pitch down around the knees and don't get the call, it'll eat at you out there. So some handle it a little bit better than others. And right here, clearly letting the ump hear it a little bit. Outside, and that is ball four. Now, this is a story we were paying attention to before the game. We've seen him give up walks in the past, and it's an issue once again early on. And next is the designated hitter, Matt Veerling. That's in there. Strike one. Kicks and fires. And fouled off. First and second, no outs, and we're just getting started here in the top of the first. Got him looking, and that is a big first out. Two on, one out, and next to hit for Detroit, Kerry Carpenter. Good power, not great in the OBP department. And the first pitch misses for ball one. He's looking for a ground ball to get a double play and out of this jam. Two on, one out. And another ball. Tough spot right here, a couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. Next offering is down low. Colt Keith waits on deck. And that's too high, ball four. So here we go again with the walks. It's been a real struggle finding the zone for him in the past. Now, even if they get out of this jam, these walks add pressure and stress to the entire team. Digging in, Colt Keith. 
First pitch just misses. Right hander kicks deals. Just missed. Pressure's on right here. 2 0 count, base is loaded. You don't want to fall to a three ball count and then walk in a run. He's got to challenge the hitter right here. And a pitch. And that misses as well. Good pitchers make pitches in big situations. And right here, with a middle of the order hitter up, runner in scoring position, he's got to find a way to throw a quality strike. Base is loaded. One away. On a line out towards center. Brings it in. Runner tags from third. And they'll score first. It's one zip. That wasn't your standard sack fly. He barreled that baseball. Just couldn't get it to drop in. So first and second with two outs. And up next for Detroit, Spencer Torkelson. Seems like he's making contact with everything lately. Can make it a five-game hitting streak with a knock in this one. That one in there across the letters. At this point, the clean inning is over. Got to settle in, focus on the hitter, and get out of it with minimal damage. First and second, two down. Right through there for a strike. All you got to do is concentrate and execute this next pitch. Get yourself out of the jam, back into the dugout. Righty delivers. That misses the zone. Now one and two. Wouldn't chase that time. Two on, two outs. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. That one the other way. Corner. Throws to first, and they get Torkelson for the out. They limit the damage here. One run in the inning, but they leave two. On to the bottom of the first. It's the Tigers one, and the Cubs coming up. Back here with my pal Siggy and pitching in this game, Kenta Maeda. Well, you know this guy wants to be better than that. I mean, the ERA is bloated. He understands that he's got to put his team in a better position to win ball games. And at this point, you have to forget about your own individual stats and you have to go out there and attack and try to get that W. And if you do that, you'll look up and most likely that ERA will have dropped over time. Ian Happ up to hit. Sharp grounder, that's through for a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. Michael Bush, the next Cub to hit. And delivers outside. Bush, 26 years old, a former first round pick back in 2019. The pitch. No, oh, he's really working him away this at bat. Sometimes take a little bit off velocity. Try to get a rollover, something on the ground. Stay away from that big hole on the right side of the infield. That misses the zone, and it's 3-0. And ball four to a board. Bell just came apart right there. Four pitch walk and guy at the play was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. So now here's the DH. Seiya Suzuki. Pitch misses there and that's ball one. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit.
and a base hit on a line. Half on his way home. Here comes the throw, but it's offline. He will score. Comes through with the RBI. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle. Allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. Here's Cody Bellinger. I'm curious how he decides to attack on the mound. This guy at the plate has been great hitting under pressure this year. Singy, maybe some nerves getting the best of him at the first? Well, it's hard to know exactly if it's nerves or not, but he just doesn't have it right now. Those hitters on the other side, they're going to say it's nerves and use that as a competitive edge to try to jump on him even more. A little bit high. 2 and 0. Oh. Just missed. It's great to get on the board in the first frame of the ball game, but here's an opportunity for them to really open things up with a couple of runners on. Let's see if they can cash in. Next offering is in for a strike. Late with the swing there. Great spot to be in right here for the pitcher. You can either strike this guy out or get a ground ball double play. Tied up here in the early going. Three and two. Payoff pitch. Line drive. That's a base hit. The run scores from third and a 2-1 ball game now. Two consecutive base hits for these guys here. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. First and second, no outs. Isaac Paredes, the next Cub to hit. That one is absolutely belted. And that gets down into the gap. One run across, throw cut off, now to the plate. He's in there. It's 4-1. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. Off the bat, it was headed for the gap all the way. And as a hitter, you love seeing those as you take your first couple of steps out of the box. You know you've got some real estate to run on. It's such a good feeling. Nice liner into the gap right there. Here's Nico Horner. Good defender. He's been inconsistent offensively. Ball one there. Well, it's not the inning he was planning on to begin this start, but you've got to find a way to shake things off and give your team some length and put up some zeros. The 1-0. -oh. Late on that fastball. I think he was sitting off speed there. Paredes leads off second with nobody out. A little out front there as he swings through it. Clearly, he was sitting on a fastball right there. It just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle two strikes. Man at second. That's a base hit. And they get it in quickly. First and third now with nobody out. Well, he wasn't afraid to hit with two strikes. I think he choked up a little bit, maybe spread out, but he got the job done right there. Dansby Swanson stands in. I'm liking what I've seen from him at the dish lately, batting over 300 so far this month. Maeda checks over to first, and he's back. Well, a really rough inning out there on the mound. And uh, this is one of those where you learn a lot about a guy's toughness and his ability to turn the page and keep pressing forward. No outs. Runners at first and third. That breaking ball is in for a strike, and quickly it is nothing in two. And ball one. Just outside. And the count's even at two. It's a good take.
Rips one to right. Fair ball. One run is in. Horner flies around third. Relay throw home. In there safely. It's 6-1. They are really feeding off each other. That's five hits in a row. He really shot that one down the right field line and somehow found a way to keep it from slicing foul. One thing that was great about the approach is head was down all. Number 62 taking over on the mound. He doesn't get a lot of strikeouts compared to other relievers, so he relies on getting that soft contact and the defense doing work behind him. They'll have to be on their toes with him on the bump. Pete Crow Armstrong, the next Cub to hit. Out to center. Keith settles underneath it. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And there's one away. Batting nine, the catcher. Time now for the Chicago Cubs lineup. This is an offense, Chris, that's having a hard time scoring runs right now. Yeah, sometimes things just aren't going to click, and unfortunately what happens is players press, they try to do a little bit more, and they get out of their game. You've got to let the game come to you. If you chase it, it's going to run from you. So this is a team that just needs to calm down, relax, and understand that they're going to come out of this. And now it's Miguel Amaya. Missed with a changeup. Ball one. Still only one out here in the inning. Swings through that one. One ball, one strike. Outside. The two one. Swing it a foul straight back. Here's the 2-2. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A-B going. One out and a runner at second. Ripped on the ground a second. Throws to first in time. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Ian Happ. One for one with a single and a run scored so far. That one off the mark, ball one. Two outs in there at the knees, and it's one and one. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. Misses just off the outside edge. I think that was a strike. No, he's not afraid to fall into a two-strike count. Knows the strike zone very well, so much so that I think umpires will look at him and determine whether it's a ball or strike, if he swings or not. Here's a high fly ball out to center. Sizes this one up. Makes the play, and it's out number three. So a great inning there as they bat around to score six times to open up the lead. Second inning coming up here at Wrigley. It's the Cubs six and the Tigers one. Back here at Wrigley Field, here's the rookie third baseman, Jace Young. Assad back to work. There's a strike. Out towards left center. Crow Armstrong should have it. 
One down. Batting it. The catcher. Dylan. And next up for the Tigers, Dylan Dingler. Oh, he doesn't get the call. And that's ball one. And that's a pitch early in this game. He needs called for a strike. Struggling with command issues. He's got to get a little help from the umpire. One out, base is empty. Well hit the other way. That one going back and foul. Next pitch is outside. Well, I think he's trying to get a feel for where that one missed. I mean, it could have gone either way, but he looked a little shocked for a second there. And here it comes. Swing and a miss struck him out. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically he likes to shoot the ball the other way, but that time, a little anxious. Two outs, bases empty. Javi Baez digs in right side. There's a strike. Two down, nobody on. And there's a strike. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches down an 0-2 hole. He's going to have to battle, hope he gets a mistake. And there's a ball. I don't like to say he wasted a pitch. I think that was a purpose pitch. Change the eye level, have him look up. Now go back exactly where you want to go. The shortstop takes the ball. Swung on, belted. That one back there. Into the bleachers and gone. He'll circle the bases. His seventh home run of the season. It's 6-2. He absolutely feasts on right-handed pitching and devours that one for a homer. And you can see that's what he expects of himself. At bat after at bat, he's that confident. So many times a sinker inside is a foul ball off the ankle for the batter. But that time he did a really nice job of staying inside the pitch and getting through it. And here's the Tiger leadoff man, Parker Meadows. Just off the outside edge, 1-0. The line of the pitch. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Two outs. Swing and a pop up in foul ground. On the move. Brings it in for the third out. One in the inning, and it comes from a rather unlikely power source. It's now 6 2. Major League Baseball is on the show. Bottom of the second. Now the number two hitter, Michael Bush. The first baseman, Michael Bush. The pitch. Foul ball. That one missed. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. Kicks and deals. And a rope in the center field base hit. And the leadoff man aboard. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side, and the hands just continue to carry through. 
the middle of the field. Next is the designated hitter, Seiya Suzuki. Singled and scored his first time. to second and he's out. <laughs> Fastball in for a strike. It's 0-1. One down, base is empty. Good eye right there. Woody Keller making the calls behind home for us today. And, Book, something to keep an eye on is how pitchers utilize the top part of the strike zone. We see a lot more of that in today's game with pitchers going up there with hard stuff. Keller, definitely an umpire that isn't afraid to call strikes up in that part of the strike zone. Top of the zone for a called strike. What about some no-nos? Like, you can't call the umpire blue the way you do in Little League or high school, right? <laughs> yeah. Even in the minor leagues, you'll learn quickly. Uh, you call the umpire blue. You better learn his name. And uh, that's just part of being a professional player and even a major league player. At the belt and fires. Fouled off the plate. They'll do it again. As the game has moved along, we see more and more information supplied by teams about the umpires. I've been in clubhouses where they have pictures of all four umpires, nicknames, hometowns, and as well hobbies listed, just so you can kind of small talk the umpire a little bit. <laughs> that's great. The pitch. And that's in the dirt. To the right side, and that chance handled. He made the pitcher earn that out after a long at bat. Well, he didn't recognize changeup earlier enough, got out in front a little bit, rolled over on it, and beat it into the ground. Bellinger up to hit, singled and drove in a run his first time through. That catches the corner. Two out, space is empty. That one's in there, and that's strike two. And he deals. That one drilled left field. Green makes the grab, and that's the third out. Here at Wrigley Field, here's the left fielder, Riley Green. Riley Green. The wide to kick the pitch. That's through there for a strike. Well, these Tigers showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. They're doing a good job of working the pitch count, and they've been able to push a couple of runs across to score as well. Swing and a miss, and he's down on strikes and one out now. Well, clearly just anxious right there, and understandably so in an 0-2 count. You feel like you've got a lot of plate to cover, and you don't want to strike out, and you end up striking out. That's just one of those pitches where it's not over the plate, but because you committed to it as it was leaving his hand, by the time you realized it wasn't going to be in the zone, it's too late to hold up your swing. He swings and fouls one off. Still relatively early, but with the pair of runs already on the board, the ripple effect of that high pitch count might set him up to do more damage later in this game. Good eye in that spot. And that one's a little bit low. Ball three. Go Chris through the early stages. 
he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. And down on strikes. And there is another strikeout. Well, that right there is just a pitcher's pitch. Tailing away from the hitter, low and away with some good action at the end. You know, even if he gets the bat to that ball, it's probably just a weak ground ball to the opposite side. I tell you what, that's a tremendous two-strike pitch. Carpenter in the box with two gone and takes a look at a called strike. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Tigers are shut down there. They still trail it here. It's six to two. Back here at the friendly confines. Isaac Paredes now. And the pitch. That one's in there. And it's 0-1. You know, these Cubs putting together some really good at-bats in this game. There's been a lot to like with how they're approaching their chances at the plate. They jumped all over the starter and knocked him out of the game early. He just was never able to settle in, and the damage was done by the time he got the hook. Oh, and two now. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. I mean, when you're chasing the opposing starter in the first inning or two, that's just such a tone setter for the game. And it puts the other team back on their heels, and it instills a lot of confidence in your lineup from top to bottom. Now this is in the air down the line. And that lands in no man's land a foul ball. The pitch. Very high with that one. One and two to count. The pitch. Fouls it off, still one and two. And now the lefty. Base hit. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night. And just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. So, man aboard. And now, Nico Horner. That one finds the zone. Strike one. Kicks and fires. And a foul ball. Rudder at first with no outs here. That one hit to right. Carpenter should have this one. And there's one down. The batter number seven. Shortstop. Gensby. Swanson. Man at first. Now it's the shortstop, Dansby Swanson. He drove in two with a double his first time up. Just missed. And the 1 0. -oh. Swing and blast one down the line. It's gone if it's fair, but it hooks foul. And the pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Paredes stands at first with one out. And another ball. Two 
Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. That's a little bit low. Stays alive. And a pitch. And that's ball four. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. Well, that's a nice job of grinding out that at bat. Saw a lot of pitches and ends up drawing the walk. Very gritty. So one out with two aboard. So up now for Chicago, Pete Crow Armstrong. Ball one there. This guy absolutely flies. The defense wants to turn two, but they've got to get a ball they can do it with. Make sure you get the first out before you try to rush and get two and end up with nothing. Two on, one out. And that is in for a strike. And the count even at one. And that one hit to first. And he grabs it in foul ground. And a pitch. Got him looking. Two down. Just locked him up right there for the second out. And that's an at bat he's probably going to be thinking. Tyler Holt into the game. This southpaw has been really good against left handed hitters. So first and second with two outs. And up next for Chicago, Miguel Amaya. 0 for 1 so far. Pitch misses. And that is ball one. Two on, two outs. Fought off foul. And here it comes. That misses. And it's two and one. Two outs. And a foul ball. The pitch. Still two and two after the foul ball. The pitch. Down the line. Sizing this one up. He's got it. And that will end the inning. Cubs strand a couple. They lead it six to two. And we're back. Here's the second baseman, Colt second Keith. Baseman. Keith measures six feet two inches, 220 pounds, and he was a fifth round pick in 2020. Clobber to right field, way back, gone. A gigantic blast. His 12th of the season, and they cut into the lead. It's 6-3. Things might get pretty interesting if they keep connecting on pitches like that. With a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Patient, waited for it. It was like BP all over again. And now the first baseman, Spencer Torkelson. Foul ball there. Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up, and you start to expect a big inning. 
A one down. Inside, just missed. Nobody on, nobody out. Top half of inning number four. This to third. And foul ball. Here's a one-two. Just missed. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from at bat to at bat. Good job to fight that one off. High fly ball out towards left field. Way back there. And that is a foul ball. Well, he's desperately looking for that swing and miss. He's going to have to just change speeds a little bit, try to move it around, create just a little bit of illusion at the end. Line drive to short and caught. Nice swing and good solid contact. That ball was smoke, but needed a little more lift to get into the outfield gap. Maybe a little more backspin. Down the third baseman, Jace Young. 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. Curveball over for a called strike. And that one fouled off. One down, base is empty. And they'll do it again. The wind and the pitch. This one smoked out to left. Makes the grab, and there's two gone. Now that Dylan. Two outs, base is empty. And here's the catcher, Dylan Dingler. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. And that's off the inside edge. And it's one to know. Outside corner, there's a strike. And now one and two. Up the middle, Swanson gathers and throws to first. That's the third out. Detroit making up ground with this homer. And they've doubled up now. It's 6-3. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back here at Wrigley Field, bottom four. Here's the Cubs leadoff man, Ian Happ. Cubs made Ian Happ a first-round pick in 2015. He played at the University of Cincinnati as an infielder, played a little bit of outfield, but a guy in 2022, what a year, Chris, both an all-star and a gold glover. The lefty fires. Swings and sends a rocket to right. And out number one on the grab. Man, that's one of those at-bats where you have to remind yourself it's about the process. He did everything right right there, nothing to show for it, but in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at-bat. Yeah, and wins that gold glove as a left fielder, and it's a guy that was a pretty good center fielder as well, but you know, one of the things for him is just being able to be in the same spot every day. I think it increases the comfort level and allows that athletic ability to really shine. Two away. The batter, the designated hitter. Now it's the DH, Seiya Suzuki. Singled and scored back in the first. He's one for two. That one fouled off. Two down, nobody on. This one smashed down the right field line. And that's a fair ball. Around first, heading for two. In safely, 
It's a double at his second hit. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Punched that one down the line for extra bases, and that was an excellent job going with the pitch on the outside. Got his bat on plane and just drove it. Man at second here with two away. Cody Bellinger, the next Cub to hit. One for two. And first offering is fouled off. And the strategy of winning a ball game when you can make that pitcher work a little more expose himself by throwing pitches that could be the key to winning perhaps later on so good job of extending this inning getting a knock with two outs to bring the number four hole hitter up and a swing and a miss there and that skips in the dirt Suzuki at second with two down. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. A controversial called strike three to end the inning. One left for the Cubs as they're unable to add to their 6 3 lead. And welcome back to the ballpark. Top five, John Shelby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Javier Baez. Assad back to work. Misses outside. Ball one. Movement in the bullpen. Justin Steele getting ready to go. Pearson, the right hander, loosening up as well. The 1 0. Hammers that one, curling down the line and foul. If they did a poll of top tattoos in Major League Baseball, Javi Baez, I think, would have to be in the top five. Right on the back of his neck is the Major League Baseball logo. So it's effectively right under the MLB logo that's on his cap. Bounced up the middle. Swanson on to first. And the leadoff hitter retired in the fifth. Good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for. Ball on the ground, nice ground out. So the lineup flips over, and stepping in is the speedy Parker Meadows. And downstairs. One ball, no strike. Bounce to third, and that should be extra bases. Now he'll turn for second. And he's got his second double of the game. Riley Green up now for the Tigers. A strikeout and a walk. And there's a foul ball. Hard hit, right side. Horner over to first. Two down. Fastball groove right down the middle. Usually a lot of damage done with that pitch. A hard grounder, but he wanted to get that ball in the air. Maybe drive it into the gap. Next is the Tigers DH, Matt Veerling. He's been really clutch with runners in scoring position this season, so they'll have to be extra careful in this matchup. Ball one and a pitch inside. Two outs with a runner at third. Gets the outside corner with that one. Riding to the plate. Swinging a foul straight back. One and two now. 
On the ground to third. And that should be extra bases. In comes the runner from third. And now just a two-run deficit. And into second easily with a two-out double. Man, he just absolutely turned on that one. Ripped it down the line. Nice job of staying in his mechanics. And it's scored position with two away. And next will be the Tiger cleanup hitter, Kerry Carpenter. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Here comes a pitch. Next offering misses down and away. Runner at second, two down. And we're at the top of the fifth. Next pitch is outside. Right-hander kicks, deals. Fouls one off. Two and two. And the right-hander deals. Got him. Inning over, and it could have been worse. They get a run on two hits, no errors, and the man left. Last half of the fifth coming up. It's the Cubs six and the Tigers four. Back now to start the bottom of the fifth and taking over on the mound, Shelby Miller. Just trying to keep this one close here and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. Here's the third baseman, Isaac Paredes. The third baseman, Isaac Paredes. And a pitch. Fouled off left side. Miller, a very difficult guy to get hits off of. It's really rare for teams to string stuff together against him. He wins every pitch. And for a hitter, sometimes a victory is just fouling off one of his pitches. That just misses. And one and one. Activity in the bullpen for Detroit. Will Vest, the hard throwing righty, is up and loosening. And another ball. Unless he beats himself, somehow can't find it, doesn't have the control command that day, you can pretty much forget about it. Wouldn't chase that time. As a hitter, there's even more pressure to take advantage of any mistake, right? Yeah, and you're hoping that, you know, somehow, some way, whether it's a hit by pitch, a walk, something bad happens because outside of that, stuff is just too good to fail. And here's a 3-2. Up the middle, slides for the stop. The throw, and very nicely done for the out. Well, Boog, as an infielder, you have to be ready for anything. In that spot, it required going to the ground, getting a little dirty, and making a strong throw for the out. Great play. So up next, Nico Horner. That pitch in for a strike. Going one. And he's got deception in his delivery, and it's not that he's trying to deceive the hitters. He just has this natural flow that makes it hard for hitters to pick the ball up. It gets on them a little bit quicker than they anticipate, even though they know what the velocity numbers are. And that's in the dirt. Right side. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there are two down. The shortstop. Two outs. Base is empty. And next for the Cubs, Dansby Swanson. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond. And this guy is at the top of the list. There's a strike. Yeah, we go beyond just the you know fielding percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have range and. 
you know, close holes that, you know, are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. Bounce to the right. Throw on to Torkelson, and that ends the inning. Cubs are down quietly. They're up 6-4. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Justin Steele. And compared to a lot of other relievers, strikeouts have not been a big weapon for him this year, so the defense should be active. Now it's the second baseman, Colt Keith. He's already homered here in this one. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. Boog, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle, you can lose your mechanics, but the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way, and this is what this guy does. On the ground, and that's just foul. The one-two. Fights it off, you'll see another. You could see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off-speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. And that just misses. Really good slider. He's up there just hoping that it ends up off the plate away. Just off the inside corner, and the count's full. Payoff pitch. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Left-hand batter waits. Swing and a pop-up. Foul territory for the catcher. Makes the catch. One up, one down. Boy, that was a hanging breaking ball right there. I think he tried to do a little bit too much. Sometimes those eyes can get really big. I think his swing broke down as well, and that's what caused him to pop it up. And now it's going to be Spencer Torkelson. High fly ball, shallow right field. Bellinger drifts towards it. And puts the squeeze on that one. Two down. Now, that. now here is Jace Young. Young. In for a strike. It's 0-1. Movement in the Cubs bullpen. Drew Smiley up and throwing. Lopez, a hard-throwing right-hander, up as well. And the 0-1. And ball one. Two down, nobody on. And we're at the top half of the sixth. That's inside. Now two balls and a strike. That clips the corner. Popped up, foul territory behind the play. Amaya drifts towards it, makes the catch inning over. Three up, three down that time. 8-9-1 scheduled in the bottom of the sixth. It's the Cubs six and the Tigers four. Here at Wrigley Field, where we go bottom six. So up now for Chicago, Pete Crow Armstrong. The pitch. Here's a high chopper, and he picks it up, and he'll put it in his pocket. Righty delivers. Foul ball. And there's a ball.
And the righty deals. That misses the zone. Now two and two. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. No, oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. From a pitcher's perspective, that's a beautiful splitter right there. As a hitter, you don't like it, but he's commanded his fastball, and out of that same tunnel, that splitter comes, and the bottom just falls out of it. Just off the inside corner. Going to count one and two. Too close for me, partner, to take that 0-2 fastball, but for whatever reasons, he let it go by. He's still in the at-bat. I don't think he'll let the next one go. One down, base is empty. Swing and a bouncer. Young. Zips it to first. Two up, two down. Deceptive slider right there. Stayed in the tunnel a long time. Got that hitter out front. Rolled over it. Put it on the ground. Back to the leadoff spot in the Cubs lineup. Ian Happ, the next Cub to hit. One for three. Swing and a miss as he was out front. Strike two. That's down and in. Fights that one away, still one and two. Right handed reliever. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Three up, three down, inning over. Nothing happening there for the Cubs. They still lead it, though, 6 4. Here's a new pitcher from the pen, Nate Pearson. And he's been racking up strikeouts at a high rate this year, typically at least one an inning, so he'll be tough to get to. Now at the plate, Dylan Dingler. The pitch. Close one doesn't get the call. Ball one. Pearson, the tall righty, 255 pounds, and they traded for him earlier this year. Not even close there, and it's two and one. And a foul ball. The pitch. And that's outside, and now it's three and two. The guy at the plate could recognize slider out of the hand. Didn't stay in the tunnel very long in terms of depth and perception. He knew right away it was an off-speed pitch. Into center. Sizes this one up. Makes the grab one away. Now it's Javier Baez. He's already homered in this game. That's in for a strike. Swing and a base hit. So the one out hit turns the lineup over. He was all over that one. Showed a willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy, didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep. Took the barrel right to it and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. Parker Meadows up now for the Tigers. Outfield playing pretty shallow. 
Just missed. Now this team is definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. Next pitch is downstairs. Really been able to slow down the game tonight with his at bats and the biggest one he's had so far. He doesn't look anxious at all. Swing and a ball lined out towards center. And there's two away. And next to hit for Detroit, Riley Green. High fly ball down the left field line. Hap heads towards it. Hauls it in to end the inning. Tigers leave one, and the score remains 6 4. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Will Vest. He's been so good against lefties. So up now for Chicago, Michael Bush. The first baseman, Michael Bush. And a pitch. That one missed. At the belt and fires. That's off the mark, and that's ball two. And that one clips the corner. Next offering clips the zone count even at two. Got him. Breaking ball clips the outside edge. Tremendous job of bringing that ball back over the plate. He gets just enough of it to get the call. And I'll tell you what, as a hitter, it starts out of the zone. It looks really far away. And for it to catch the outside corner, you just have to tip your cap to the pitcher. Suzuki in the box now. No balls and a strike. Tigers bullpen with some action. Alex Fiedo appears to be getting ready. And I'm sure he's feeling some nerves. This would be his major league debut. Kick Sandios. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Another 0 2 count right here. Pitcher just in the driver's seat. He can go anywhere he wants to go right here. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Oh, you know that's got to be very frustrating for this guy. He knows the strike zone extremely well. And you know what? Good hitters are not going to compromise. He'll take that punch out, but ultimately stick with his plan and have more success than anything else. Here comes Cody Bellinger. And that one a little below the knees. And that's ball one. Two down, nobody on. Here at the bottom of the seventh. Towards first. Takes it himself. And the Cubs go one, two, three. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Drew Smiley. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. And now the DH, Matt Veerling. The designated hitter, Matt Veerling. The wide to kick the pitch. 
There's a strike. Well, these Tigers, simply put, are producing a lot of quality swings. They have five extra base hits on the stat sheet so far, and that tells me they're seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well. The wind of the pitch. And a foul ball, third base side. With all those extra base hits, it's easy to think we're going to see that trend continue the rest of the game. They seem to be really locked in at the plate. Swing and a miss. That one in the dirt. On to first. In time to get him. One away in the strikeout. Well, I don't think there's a hitter alive that hasn't at some point succumbed to that pitch right there. It just looks like it's in the zone the entire way. And then the top spin and gravity take over in the blink of an eye. And it's just such a tough pitch to lay off of. So now it's the full hole hitter, Kerry Carpenter. First pitch doesn't find the zone. One ball, no strike. Base is empty, one away, and we're in the top of the eighth. The next offering misses, and it's 2-0. Oh. Now you get to this part of the order, yeah, there's some pop there, but more likely there are some base hits. So very important to be patient. Let the pitcher walk you, if he will. Left-hand hitter waits. On the ground, right side. And it finds its way through for a hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock, and you'll take that any time you can get him to find a hole. Checks over to first, back safely. I think you want to get a one-way lead, be very aggressive in the secondary. This hitter not a power guy, so you want to make sure that you can get some length on the secondary lead and perhaps score on a ball in the gap. Off balance feed, there's one. Double play. What a twin killing to end the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Home half of inning number eight straight ahead. It's the Cubs six and the Tigers four. Back here at the friendly confines. Out of the bottom of the eighth. Down the third baseman, Isaac Paredes. And a pitch. Just off the inside edge. And he deals. That one at 95 missed up top. Now 2-0. And another ball. And a four pitch walk. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't there offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Stepping in, Nico Horner. That one's upstairs, ball one. And that is ball one. Runner takes off. Popped up. Torkelson on his way over. Can't get to this one. Throws to second. Not in time. He's safe. Well, those kind of lucky soft hits will always make you smile. There are a lot of nicknames people have attached to hits like that. Blooper, flare, duck snort, lawn dart, etc. But whatever you want to call it, it's a knot. And those are the ones that will make you smile as a hitter just about every time. Here's the shortstop at the play. Dansby Swanson. right through there for a strike looking for some insurance or as our friends down in the south would say insurance no matter how you say it we know what you mean the pitch lace down the line this looks like extra bases rounds third headed for the plate one run is in 
Now two runs score, and they're up by four. Gets the job done as he brings home a pair. Textbook bat control right there. Got a pitch on the outside, saw it deep into the zone, and just barreled it up, went the other way for the knock. So the Tigers get a new arm from the pen, Alex Fiedo. Well, he's been a bit of a wild card out there in terms of throwing strikes. He's definitely struggled with free passes this year. Pete Crow Armstrong will hit next. And first offering is fouled off. The pitch. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Swanson stands at second with no outs. Got him swinging. He chased the changeup. One gone here. Oh, tough night at the dish. Punching out for the third time right there. He just hasn't looked very comfortable at the plate. A little unsure of his timing right now. Not picking up the spin and location of these pitches. He'll have some adjustments to make. Fiedo throws over. Swanson dives back in safely. Amaya in the box with one away as he takes ball one. Activity in the bullpen for Detroit. Bo Brisky getting loose for A.J. Hinch. One out and a runner at second. Here the bottom half of the eighth inning. Edge of the zone for a strike, and the count is one and one. Swing and a miss. The punch out there, two away. And he'll be beating himself up on the way back to the dugout. Got a pitch to hit and just couldn't get to it. I think that slider really caught way more of the plate than it was supposed to. Digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Ian Happ. That clips the corner. Bounce to the left side. Slings to first, and that'll keep more runs from coming in, inning over. But they'll pick up a couple runs here, both coming on this two-run double. Last chance coming up here for the Tigers. We're back. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, number 21. And he's got a nice lead to work with, so he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. And here is Spencer Torkelson. Spencer Torkelson. And here it comes. That's in there. Strike one. The Cubs bullpen with some action. Julian Merriweather up and throwing for manager Craig Council. Lopez getting loose as well. And that one hammered. That's back. And that one's gone into the bleachers. Home run number five on the season, and they're chipping away. It's 8-5.
Oh, that one got in the jet stream on a line drive. We saw the numbers on the backs of the jerseys of the outfielders, which is usually bad news. And all of a sudden, they're back in this ball game. Young, the batter now, as he swings and misses for strike one. That's hard hit on the line. Dives for it. Got it. Makes the play. Just a great job of concentration there as he leaves the ground to go airborne to make a diving catch. That's a tough play, but he got the job done. And up next for Detroit, Dylan Dingler. First pitch, and he just misses. One down, base is empty. Lifted in the air, right center field. Sizing this one up. Makes the grab, two down. So out of the pen comes the right-hander, Jesse Miller. A chance at his first save of the year. So it's their last chance in this one. The batter now, Javier Baez. Clips the corner, and that's strike one. Fought off foul. Two outs. That one just missing inside. It's a ball and two strikes. And a pitch. Outside. And the count is two and two. Hit to right, and that should do it. And that'll do it. The ball for his first career save deserves to be on display at his house. I mean, it's kind of like when a restaurant frames its first dollar bill somewhere on a wall. You just can't forget your first save. And this one ends with the score 8 to 5. The Cubs go home a winner for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.